take your privacy seriously. You guys should check out private internet access. Link will be below. They got a great deal going on. Well, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to the video that some of you guys probably have been waiting on. This is how to flash a custom ROM or stock ROM and upgrade your box. So obviously you're gonna need a couple things. So you're gonna need your device that you're looking to uh, flash. Obviously you're gonna need to look up the ROMs. You're gonna need a toothpick or some type of skinny object to go into your AV port of the box. And you're gonna need a double-ended USB cable. Again, you can splice again, uh, splice together two USB cables. However, you can order one online. Uh, you can get them fairly long or short. Uh, it's all up to you, but again, it needs to be a double-ended because you're going to need to plug it into a various USB port on your box um, while activating the pin in the AV port. Now, your box, all boxes should have an AV port, okay? You may have two uh, jacks. It's the one that says AV. If you look inside of it, uh, you can kind of see it on the image here. There's a little black thing because there's a button there. So basically, what you're going to do you're just gonna hold that down. You're gonna take your double-ended USB cable. Okay, you should be able to hear a click. I'll try and include the click on the video here. Um, but that's what I was doing. I was clicking it for you. So hopefully you did hear it. Okay, there you go. You should have heard it. So <laughs> anyhow, you're going to need to make sure you hold this down. Now, if you're using a toothpick, you may end up slipping off. So I would advise you maybe to find something a little thicker, you know, uh, a, a wire, a thick wire or something, uh, even like a pen, um, you know, a paper clip or something like that, that you can maybe tape together two or three and pop it in there. But anyhow, you're going to hold it down. You're going to grab your USB cable and you're going to plug it in to the side of your box or the back of your box. Some boxes have four ports, so it's going to be the USB, USB port on the back of the box. Some of them may have two USB ports at the side, okay? And on the demonstration here, I plugged it on the bottom one. You're going to want to do the top USB port on the side. Again, this can vary if it doesn't work, and obviously I'm going to explain on the second part of this video, which is going to be coming up in a matter of seconds, what you need to do. You're going to need to re plug it in and keep testing for it to pick it up on the computer. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the second part of the video right now. So now that you've got the understanding that you're going to need the uh, device that you want to uh, load the firmware, and I'm talking stock or custom uh, firmware your toothpick or whatever device to stick in the AV port to activate the reset and your double-ended USB cable. Now you can also splice together one, but I'd advise you just to look for one. Uh, they're pretty cheap. You can order them online too. Uh, I may put some links below. But anyhow, uh, depending on the device, you're obviously going to need uh, for rocket ship, you're going to need a rocket ship uh, driver set. For other boxes, you may need to install uh, firmwares and, and stuff like that, or drivers for that, I should say. Like the T95Z uses a USB burning tool. So all these tools are pretty much the same. They're all laid out the same. Some of them will have English, uh, some of them won't, okay? But they're all the, pretty much the same again. So uh, this tool right here, when you open it, um, you just hit this button. If you wanted to put it to English, you hit this, go here, and as you can see, uh, most of the tools will kind of look like this. You have this, so you would look for um, where you have your ROM, okay? So I have my ROM file here, or firmware file here. So you would load that, okay? And it's the same thing with the other tool that's here, okay? Flash tool. A lot of them may look end up looking like this too, okay? And again, a lot of these are uh, English and that and you can switch them, okay? And again, you would hit firmware, okay? So we're gonna go to where I have it. Wrong. 
you hit that and there you go a lot of these uh depending on the firmware that you're doing you can either hit upgrade uh, if you're upgrading but uh sometimes they'll advise you to hit restore or upgrade uh, if the upgrade one doesn't seem to work do restore it now i'm i'm going to mention this you need to make sure that you are using the right firmware uh, if you don't you could possibly end up breaking your device and it's a pain in the half to unbreak your device i may have a video on how to do this but there's a couple sites that you can go to to get firmwares and there's tutorials on these sites to help you okay so one of these sites is uh, freak tab they are known to have uh, stuff like this so you could search up your box and download a custom firmware for it so let's see h6 max firmware freak tab Okay, and there's two, I believe Supercell has, so here's the stock one, a post from February, but if you go to the last page, you'll end up seeing one, but I believe, I believe Supercell does have one, yeah, see, here's a modified firmware, okay, so these run better than stock, okay. As you can see, they have changes based on stock and another ROM, uh, fixed streaming 4K apps, YouTube, 1080 UI, uh, boot a lot faster, MMC also faster, MMU is a lot better now, so on and so forth. Now, sometimes these don't get updated for a while with newer firmwares that come out, um, but it is what it is, okay? Uh, you shouldn't need to update your box all the time. XDA, again, uh, you can come here, look for boxes. Uh, you know, firmwares for boxes. They have the T95Z, uh, uh, Poison ROM, and stuff like that. So you can come here, click based on your box, and, or even search. Another site is this one. You can come here and you can search up boxes and download firmwares for that box. So again, you can look up H96 Max, and it will give you the firmwares for the various boxes and so on and so forth. The last one is Entertainment Box, okay? Again, you have firmwares on here that you can download too, all right? So you can come here, you can search them, or I'll just link these below, okay? Firmware page, latest firmwares. Again, if you search and put Entertainment Box, you'll get uh, the box that you have, plus the link to the firmware from them. Okay, so now let's do that, what I showed you in the video at the beginning. Let's hit the reset. Now, I'm gonna let you know, some boxes may have four USB ports. If you notice that after you're holding the reset button and plugging in the cable, that it does not pick up your box, and also you do not wanna have a power connected to your box, because you don't need it. Um, if you notice that it doesn't pick it up, try another USB port. You'll see an indication so give me a second. When I plug this in, you're gonna see an indication pop up on both these. So make sure you're looking, okay, on the screen right now. And hold on, I gotta find the reset button. There we go. Some boxes may take a minute to be picked up and some of them may not okay uh, this is a given with some of these boxes okay so this one didn't want to hold on there you go okay i don't know if you saw that pop up really quick port one here changed to loader and this changed this means it picked up the device so you can remove the toothpick or whatever you're using to hold the reset button and now you can start the process Okay, unfortunately I'm not gonna use this one. I'm just gonna use this software, okay? And I'm gonna hit restore. So it's gonna do what it needs to. It will say download firmware, verifying firmware. It's gonna go through all these different steps. Now a lot of these, uh, if they air up and stuff like that, it could be due to um, issues. And you also can have where you have the right firmware for your box and you go to flash it and you end up breaking it 
Uh, a lot of these motherboards for the boxes, uh, the PCP uh, board, when you take apart the box, you're going to need, um, you know, wire or, uh, um, what do you call them, to touch two pinpoints together and you basically can bypass and allow you to uh, continue flashing stock ROM or a custom one. But again, I may do that on another video. However, again, if your box is running fine, you do not need to do this. If you're on Android 6 and you want to go to Android 7 and your box can't physically upgrade, you need to end up flashing it yourself. So uh, there's normally no risk in doing it that way. Um, again, you're going to want to hit restore uh, for that option. And again, doing this too will wipe your device. Make sure you back everything up, okay? Uh, if you're looking to keep stuff, if you don't have anything important on, you could just log back in your Play Store account, download everything you need to download, and you're off to the races. Again, some of these boxes have custom firmwares, some of them don't. Uh, some boxes may have 7.1.2, some of them may have Oreo, some of them may only go from Android 5 to Android 6, and not 7 and not 8, okay? It all depends on the manufacturer and people who decide to do custom firmwares or if they decide to push out firmwares. But as you can see, it's checking firmware, and it should be, uh, it should say completed. There you go. Okay. So the device is firmware upgraded. Okay. So again, the same thing. You can download that custom uh, firmware that I, I showed you, and you could just load that if you wanted to. It's the same process. Okay. You just got to point to the firmware and run. On this thing here, uh, you would have to reconnect your device if you wanted to redo it, but because it, uh, it disconnected. But that's all you got to do. Uh, again, do not do this if you do not feel you need to do this. Okay. Uh, sometimes it can fix issues if you cannot update your box, and you have issues with you know the Play Store or whatever or memory or don't have a navigation bar. Some of these custom firmwares fix that, or some of the new stock. Updated ones will fix it. A lot of them don't have a change lock, so you would be better to look it up and see what people have said about the firmware before you attempt to load it, because it may not fix issues. It could actually bring on a lot of unwanted ones, uh, like your WAN port could end up breaking. You can only use wireless. Wireless could be uh, faulty and disconnect uh, a lot. Now you can downgrade. Uh, firmwares okay I'm just letting you know uh, some of these do have a reset tool that you can use to reset so uh, again you're gonna want to go to these sites you're gonna want to look up a lot of them link to the firmware to the driver assist as you can see here um, some of them will have this some of them won't and then they list the tool that you need okay so it's pretty pretty simple once you start looking but this should kind of give you an idea of how to do it I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope it wasn't too confusing if you want you could join my discord server if you ever need help and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video peace out you made it to the end of the video thank you for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe don't forget on the left is a video in main lake and on the right you can check out my last video again thank you for checking out the video it means a lot see you on my next one peace